Now, typically the GPU is used to render graphics, but in this case, you can actually use it to encode H.264. Sweetie. <laughs> Hey, and welcome back. Um, once again, this is They Gave Me a Camera, and today we're gonna to be talking a little bit about NVIDIA and how a device like this, the Shield, has something to do with Citrix. Um, we're, we've got lots of things to talk about. NVIDIA, I've, I've actually was really surprised at how, much, how many things in my house run NVIDIA, from the Shield device that I got from GTC to my Nexus tablet from Google. Um, and then, of course, the main focus of anything that we would talk about a grid GPU card. Uh, I hope many of you are jealous that I'm holding one of these. This is the K1, if you're interested in knowing. I got a K2 over there. Um, so anyway, we're gonna be talking with Will Wade uh, at NVIDIA. And uh, funny story, this was actually the first video I shot for They Gave Me a Camera series. Um, but uh, Will and I talk a lot. He and I have known each other for a while, and uh, we just kind of went all over the place. We talked about Chromebooks, we talked about uh, the Shield, um, and then we ended up talking about H.264 a bit. So I'm gonna drop to the video, which as you know by now, uh, it has rough edits and everything in it. Um, but at the end of the video, I'll do a quick recap because I wanna talk about something technical that Will got, Will and I got into at the end of the video that I think is uh, pretty interesting stuff. And I'll jump on my whiteboard and we'll have a good conversation. So once again, I hope you enjoy. They gave me a camera. Hello. Um, I'm at NVIDIA with Will Wade, uh, product manager of, I believe it's Grid, right? That's correct. Yep. The Grid group. Yep. Uh, so all those cool K1, K2 cards that you guys are ch chucking in your servers, he's the one running the whole group. And uh, Will and I have known each other for quite a long time. Well, maybe not super long time, but quite a few years. Quite a while. Back and when you were um, working with some customers. Yep. yep. Customers, a Gartner, and now a CTO of Citrix. Yep. So uh, yep. I'm excited to be here. And uh, really, I just wanted to introduce people to technology. Um, you know, people wanted me to write a blog, I wanted to do a video. So, uh, Will, what do you have today to show us? Right, we, we always show SolidWorks as a good example, right? SolidWorks, I'm running it here in the traditional wireframe model, right? That's what you almost have to go to to make it work in VDI. Oh, yeah, that's the little like... Uh, yeah, the C -C scooter yeah. thing, yep, yep. And yep. this is a demo that everybody's seen and, they, and you can interact with it in you're just running this on a CPU, you can probably maybe get away with this, right? But with a graphics card behind it, now you can take full advantage of the application, right? So we're going to turn on the way end users, engineers work today, right? They actually build these things to look real. So we've got real lighting here, real reflections, real surfaces. You can see the shadow below it, right? And all of that is still interactive. You can still work this way. So whether you're an engineer that's designing this stuff. Is this all coming from a data center that's within the building here, or is it? Um, so we're actually on the NVIDIA campus. The data okay. center for this is three buildings over. We're running on, you know, the Wi-Fi. Yeah. No connection here, <laughs> guest Wi-Fi in this building. So Packets are colliding in the air. Exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. So this is, you know, this is our LAN scenario mm -hmm. with Wi-Fi. Um, and it runs extremely interactively, right? SolidWorks runs great. Um, so maybe I'm not the design engineer, maybe I'm just somebody who works in the company, um, but I wanna go you know, plot out my summer vacation because people do that at work, right? Um, I wanna go to <laughs> Estes Park about. this year. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I wanna go to Estes Park this year. I'm gonna pull up Google Earth and I'm gonna start looking at that, right? And if, if I'm on a VDI system that can't interact with just my basic Google Earth stuff, mm. I'm, I'm gonna be not happy, right? You, you wanna have that experience like you had with a PC when you had a PC. Yeah, and that's and massively difficult. I mean, just from the standpoint of all, how many pixels are changing on that screen right now as you do a zoom in, zoom out. Right, that's, right. That's not just from a GPU standpoint, from a protocol standpoint, just to pump that stuff out and give it a, a good user experience. So what we're doing right now, and I see you've got a, a, a tablet here, which is, I'm assuming, a, a, an NVIDIA tablet as well. Yeah, that one happens to be an NVIDIA which tablet. Is, um, I don't have Brad's jacket, or I could, uh, <laughs> take that with me. Yeah, um, oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I killed your... Uh, Instance here, um, that uh, that what we're actually experiencing here, which you're showing on, on your display there, that's that's actually VGPU. And uh, right now, is it just kind mm -hmm. of a test scenario where there's just one person, or do you actually have like, is this a live? 
Yeah, this is this is a live one. You're actually running this this model. Um, wow. Not on our data okay, center. Okay, that's really cool. I want to make sure we got that. <laughs> this <laughs> is this is here. coming from uh, a data center in the cloud, and I'm upside it's down. Upside down. <laughs> um, this is coming from a data center in a cloud to this tablet over our again guest Wi-Fi network here, and um, this is a publicly hosted cloud out there on one of those standard, you know. Buy, buy it by the hour type cloud. That's a really impressive and, uh, tablet experience. Yeah, so you can do this as an engineer now. You can, you can work when you're at your desk on a device like this or a big monitor with a thin client or whatever. And I got to go to a conference room. I want to take that same experience mm -hmm. with me and say, hey, what, what do you think about this? You know, I, I just put this fin on. I just put this fin on the back, right? And I want to check the design with the, the guy who's the fin expert, right? I can take this tablet and go over to his desktop. Or I can go to his desktop, log into my VM, and let him look at my desktop, right? Or I can take this to my supplier, or I can take this to my grandma's house and show off, you know, hey, grandma, this is what I work on. Do you, do you get what I do now, right? Mm -hmm. You can do this stuff this anywhere, cool. any devices. What we've got here is the, the latest Acer Chromebook with the Tegra TK1 in it. Um, and we can do Chromebooks today, right? Citrix does Chromebooks. We TK1, do, we okay. I'm, I'm yeah. okay with, with the hardware, but I'm not great at it. Is that the same yeah. thing that, that uh, the, my tablet has? I think like my Asus Nexus tablet has like a right. Tegra chip in right. it. Right, that's got the, the previous generation Tegra. Previous this is the okay. latest generation Tegra chip, TK1. So it's, okay. got a, it's got a GPU implemented in it, but the benefit of this, it's also got an H.264 decode engine implemented in the hardware. I know where right? we're going with this. Right, Go so ahead. you can do an accelerated experience here. So instead of using all four of your cores and crunching away on decoding HDX streams coming down and yeah, you can do that or you can just send it to this decoder and do an incredibly low power. I can get 12, 14 hours of battery life on this device. Why don't you tell me that the Shield mm -hmm. device, because I got one of those Shield devices at GTC, because you give them out yep. to everybody, yep. and that has the same chip in it, right? Right. And right. why don't you tell me that there was like this grid, I think it's in beta, but there's like this grid mm -hmm. gaming thing that you guys have. Right. So, so when I use that, I'm using the H.264, I'm actually using less power in that mode than if I'm running Sonic the Hedgehog locally? Correct. Correct. So That's you can crazy. play PC quality games, stream from your GeForce in your office to the Shield device with better performance, better, massively better experience than a, a local Android game, mm -hmm. and, you're, and you're using extremely low power. Yeah, I may right. have played that for a little bit. I was, I was pretty impressed, I, because I know the, the data center's in Santa Clara, and I live on the East Coast. And I was right, actually really right. impressed that how it handled uh, that type of right. latency. And, and some of the benefit there is we're actually shortening the latency, mm -hmm. because to go to that hardware and do H.264 decode in the hardware is extremely fast. Right. Same thing on the server end. We do H.264 encode on the server end extremely fast. We can get pixels out the network port before we can get them out the DVI port in most cases. Right. So you're shortening the latency at the front end. You're shortening the latency at the back end. And so your network latency in the middle is a little bit more relaxed. You can get further away. We've had people from Japan playing that. We've had people from uh, Germany playing it. And, and they're getting great, and Georgia, <laughs> yep, yep. And, and we're getting great interactive experience. So right? I want to talk about H.264 a little bit. I've been <clears throat> fairly public about my views on H.264, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm at Citrix now, and we have this whole multi-stream technology, right? We can mm -hmm. kind of layer in mm -hmm. whatever we want. It's not just, we don't just look at it as, you know, there's a nail and everything's a hammer. We right. can actually finesse the protocol in which ways we want to finesse. And I've always wondered about the H.264, you've got a chip in your grid, in the grid cards too, Correct. right? Correct. So if I have uh, a chip in the grid card and I have, you know, an H.264 offload mm -hmm. in my phone and, and a tablet, is there is there synergies between these things that if you actually use both? I mean, because to me, I think that's, yeah. if I could actually offload protocol into that card, um, I actually could pro potentially have a better scale, probably better performance too, just because I'm chucking it to silicon. Sure. Sure. It, it, everything's always faster in silicon than it mm -hmm. is in software, right? So having a dedicated encode engine on the server and a dedicated decode engine on the client device, it, it's going to be, number one, faster, reduces that latency, number two, lower power consumption, and on your server side, can potentially get you better scalability because you're not chewing up GPU or CPU resources to do your encoding. So, yeah, it's better all around. Yeah, I've been, I think, now don't that, we have something coming for that? I don't think it's actually, out. we can edit, um, but I, I don't think we actually have it in production, but I think it is like, isn't there a beta? Yeah, we, do, we don't have now? we don't have the hardware decode okay. end in. Um, we've got some work going on on the hardware encode mm -hmm. end using the the GPU based H.264 encoder. So, we, so on that the, work on, is the, on our side, the Zen and desktop side, we could actually encode H.264. Correct. Then if we send it across to the far end, you don't we don't have it figured out yet to decode it. So receiver hasn't. Correct. Got that. Yeah, the receiver yeah. hasn't used the hardware decode that we provide yet. That's, that's what we got to talk about. Good to know. Well, All right. Yep.
I've seen your different devices. We've seen the mm -hmm. demos. I'm pretty happy with uh, our conversation. So, uh, cool. Thanks for this is my first video shoot as a in, uh, here at Citrix. So thanks a lot for being my guinea pig. No, thanks for and, coming uh, to us first. We appreciate that. And cool. Looking forward to working together some more. All right. So I realize that video was a little long. I apologize for that, but uh, I really enjoyed my conversation with Will. I hope you guys got some of it out. But there was something in there that we were talking about that I wanted to draw and really bring home for people. Um, so I kind of drew a typical solution here. You've got Zen Desktop with a VM, right? And we've got Zen Server with vGPU with a grid card underneath it. Um, and then over here we've got uh, an endpoint, being a laptop or a mobile device of some sort. And Typical uh, solution here would be, you know, you use your endpoint to connect into your VM over ICA HDX. Simple enough. But we were talking about H.264, and I was talking about how ICA HDX can actually do some really interesting things. So I, when I was taught with ICA HDX, which is, man, a while ago now, like 15 years, um, I learned about this thing called ThinWire. I don't know if we talk about that much anymore, but the idea is that there's multiple channels happening within the ICA HDX protocol. And so you think of keyboard is in a channel, mouse, video, et cetera. Um, uh, you have these virtual channels, which would be in the et cetera part. Um, but I drew this other one and I pulled it out a little bit and I said H.264. Um, we can actually take H an H.264 stream and actually shove it down ICA HDX, which is pretty cool. Now, when you typically think about a GPU, you think of rendering. Like, I can't run a 3D app without a GPU. I mean, I guess I couldn't do it in x86, but to do a high-end app, I need a GPU, which is where all these you know, grid cards come from, th these guys. So I, when I have an app and it needs to render something, like I've actually been shooting this video in Premiere, and it renders a lot of things in Premiere. So it actually reaches to the GPU and renders it. Rendering it makes it so I can see what's going on on the screen, you know, so I can see it. Now, that's something that we get with the grid GPU stuff, right? We can run AutoCAD, we can run Premiere, we can run these big 3D applications. But H.264 is a, is a protocol and it kind of changes things a little bit. Within this GPU is a little piece of silicon that also lets me encode into H.264. And so if you think of rendering, rendering is the ability to take, you know, create a polygon. So for me to actually th see that 3D model and spin it around, that's rendering. In a virtual world, you render, but then you have to send it across to the endpoint device. So actually you render and then you encode. And you encode it into ICH, HTX protocol, some kind of codecs we're using within the protocol, and we send it over to that other client device. But there's another way that we can actually do that. Instead of rendering and then encoding, we can actually kind of skip some steps here, which is what Will was talking about, what they do with their grid platform, which is where I started the video with my GPU, or with my shield here. Uh, they skip some steps. And so they can actually say, okay, I'm rendering, but I know I'm going to do this in H.264. So I actually encode into the same GPU. The same GPU, this guy, that's rendering, will also encode it. Whereas ICA HDX would normally, typically, encode on the x86 processor. So that's kind of cool, because now we're pulling all that off the, that x86 CPU, which means we potentially have better performance on the CPU because we're freeing up cycles, right? And we're doing this all within this silicon that NVIDIA has made. And we can send this H.264 stream through ICA HDX to the endpoint device. And this is where it gets really interesting. Um, Almost, well, not, not all, but a lot of endpoint devices have H.264 uh, decode built into silicon. So we can encode using their grid GPU and decode potentially within the silicon itself on your mobile device, on your iPad, on, on, your, on your iOS device, on your Android device, or a Chromebook as they showed um, within the video. So right now, you can't do this. I can because I live inside of Citrix's walls and our devs have some interesting stuff around this. You can't, unfortunately, I know our CTPs will probably yell at me about that for even mentioning it, but I can actually do some interesting stuff with some dev code I have and actually do decode of H.264 on silicon. Now, the, the thing that really gets me is this conversation Will and I were having about this device. On this device, as I was showing earlier, I was playing NBA Jam. Um, in NBA Jam, there's four cores inside of this on their Tegra processor. And it's going to use those cores to you know, render the guy on the basketball making the shot. Um, but they also have the ability to show to do a video game. And I showed you that as well. I was doing Dirt 2 Racer. I showed you that for like 10 seconds in there. Um, 
that actually was running off of a backend server somewhere, very similar to VDI, right? What, what NVIDIA is doing with gaming, they're putting games on this side and they're allowing it to be rendered in, or in, decoded on hardware on this side. Um, we're looking at doing it for your virtual desktop. And so actually there's a fifth processor here, a shadow processor, that I don't have to use those four cores like I did with NBA Jam when I'm running it locally. I just use that fifth processor to decode H.264, um, which becomes an interesting thing because with if I'm having to run all four processors um, on this thing, it becomes CPU intensive. And on mobile devices, we care about that because CPU intensive means a shorter battery life. When I'm only using this fifth shadow processor, it gets a lot more interesting because I can extend my battery life. And in some cases, I can get a better user experience as well. Um, and that's kind of how they've built their whole uh, gaming grid system uh, that NVIDIA has done. It's kind of cool. You should play with it if you're a nerd like me. Um, and it's what we're looking at from a VDI standpoint. So I hope that made sense. I hope this drives the point home. And if you have questions, comments, feel free to leave them on Twitter for me. Have a good one.